Hi, in this video, I'll be showing you the performance of a Type-C trigger module. We'll see how to trigger a power adapter to get different output voltages, and then we'll gradually apply increasing load to check how much the module can handle without failing. This Type-C trigger module is Chinese built and is readily available online. You can easily buy it from AliExpress, eBay, or other online stores for just around $13. The module allows you to trigger the Type-C port for 5 volts, 9 volts, 12 volts, 15 volts, and 20 volts output. It takes input from a Type-C cable and provides output through these pins. It also has a status LED that indicates when the module is on or off. This is the main chip of the module that performs the switching function. Unfortunately, the manufacturer has removed the labeling, so I wasn't able to identify it. The switching of the Type-C output voltage is controlled through these three switches. And this chip here powers up the main controller, IC of the module. On the back side of the module, we can see thick PCB traces, which support high current flow from input to output. Now let's connect the module to a Type-C power adapter and see how we can trigger different output voltages. For 5 volts, set switch 1 to 1, switch 2 to 1, and switch 3 to 0. Now we have 5 volts at the output pins. For 9 volts, set all three switches to 1. Here we can see the power adapter is triggered to output 9 volts. For 12 volts, set switch 1 to 1, switch 2 to 0, and switch 3 to 1. Now the adapter is triggered to output 12 volts. For 15 volts, set switch 1 to 0, switch 2 to 0, and switch three to one. The adapter now delivers 15 volts. Finally, for 20 volts, set switch one to zero and switches two and three to zero one. As expected, the module now provides 20 volts. For the next test, I'll be using this load tester to measure the maximum output power we can actually get from this trigger module. The screen will show us the output voltage, total current, and power values. Let me quickly clear the old data first.
We'll start the test by applying 0.5 amperes at 20 volts, which equals 10 watts. Next, let's increase the load to 1 ampere for 20 watts. No issues at all. Now at 1.5 amperes, the output is 30 watts and the voltage remains stable. For 40 watts, we'll increase the current to 2 amperes. Again, the voltage is stable, which means the device is performing well. At 2.5 amperes, there's a slight voltage drop, but we're still getting around 49.5 watts. At 3 amperes, the output is about 59.2 watts. At 3.3 amperes, we reach 65 watts. At 3.5 amperes, we get 68.9 watts. And finally, at 3.6 amperes, the load power reaches 70 watts. We could push it further, but I think it's better not to go above 70 watts, as the PCB traces may not support higher currents. During the test, the trigger module did not heat up because the current wasn't passing through any active or passive components. It simply flowed directly from the input port to the output port. The main chip of the module only triggers the power adapter to deliver the desired voltage through the data pins. So in reality, the maximum power depends on the adapter itself. However, keep in mind that the PCB traces are not thick enough to sustain high currents for long. If you need more than 70 watts, I recommend adding additional wires between the input and output pins to prevent the PCB traces from burning. If you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And let's keep engineering alive.